morning. Welcome to St. Ignatius Church. <clears throat> you are the healing uh, may be found on page one of your order of worship, and please rise and join together in singing it. Oh, oh, yes. Jesus, you are the healing, you came to make us whole again. Jesus, you are the healing, come show us how to live. Jesus, you are the healing, Jesus, you are the healing, Jesus, you are the healing, come show us how to live. Jesus, you are the freedom, you break the chains that bind us. Jesus, you are the freedom, come show us how to live. Jesus, you are the freedom, Jesus, you are the freedom, Jesus, you are the freedom, come show us how to live. triumph over sin and death. Jesus, you are the power. Come show us how to live. Jesus, you are the power. Jesus, you are the power. Jesus, you are the power. Come show us how to Good morning, and welcome to all of you. I want to say a special welcome to any children. You know, love having you here, and I bless you. Today, was an ancient, there was an ancient name for this Sunday called Alleluia Sunday, because after today, or I should say Tuesday, the Alleluia disappears for Lent. So they always refer to this Sunday as Alleluia Sunday. So during that time, sing it out loudly. You know, join in the spirit of that day. And so as we pray today, I also want to pray. Father Greg showed up this morning with a sore throat. So I want to pray for him. He's not around, and uh, he's been through some health issues lately. And then there was a tragedy. On Friday, Sister Teresa Moser died. 
and uh, wonderful part of the community. And so I want to pray that truly she be in the kingdom of the Lord. And I want to pray for her sisters down there in Atherton that they can be comforted. They really loved her. And so let us begin as we always do. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. So may the grace, the peace, the love of the Lord be with you all. And so as we begin our prayer, we invite the Lord to touch our lives. We come with open hands. We realize our own limitations, but God loves us, and God always forgives us. And so we celebrate that wonderful love, forgiveness, and reconciliation. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you healed the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us now give praise and glory to God. Let us pray. O oh God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling place pleasing to you through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Levit Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, if someone has on his skin a scab or pustule or blotch, which appears to be the sore of leprosy, 
he shall be brought to Aaron the priest, or to one of the priests among his descendants. If the man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of leprosy shall keep his garments rent and his head bare and shall muffle his beard. He shall cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as the sore is on him, he shall declare himself unclean, since he is, in fact, unclean. He shall dwell apart, making his abode outside the camp. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to the Jews or Greeks or the Church of God, just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many, that they may be saved. Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel, according to Mark. A leper came to Jesus and kneeling down, begged him and said, if you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, Jesus stretched out his hand, touched him, said to him, I do will it, be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately and he was made clean. Then warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, see that you tell no one anything, but go show yourself to the priest and offer you for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. My sisters, my brothers, the good news of the Lord. I hope our guests that were here for that first song, it was magnificent, are still here so we can say thank you to them. It was wonderful. And <laughs> thank you. In celebrating Alleluia Sunday, it really worked well. Thank you. You know, as we listen to these two readings, the first and the third, they're so different. I mean, the narrative is totally different. In the first reading, you have this idea. If anybody showed up with leprosy, they were to exit the community. It was really a life of loneliness, cut off from family and friends. It was very draconian and vicious. But you notice Jesus, a Jew, a leper approaches him, 
and comes kneeling. Jesus doesn't say, get away. He asks, what can I do for you? And the man says, make me clean. Make me able to be part of the community, to join in the religious services, to be a part of the community. It's as I say, the life of a leper in Jewish society was, a le was of loneliness, pain, many times starvation. And even if family members tried to reach out and support them, they were rejected for that. I spent 16 years in Hawaii in wonderful ministry in the hospital. I worked with hospice, uh, AIDS ministry, but also very much involved in the ministry to the lepers in Hawaii. I managed to spend a lot of time uh, visiting Kalapapa, where the lepers had been exiled. And before Damien, it was really a very sad story. The lepers were put on a boat, and of course, Kalapapa's on the northern side, where you have the heavy tides. And they were literally thrown overboard, asked to swim into the island. Then you had Damien that came. And Damien, I don't know if you know anything in Hawaii, they refer to him as the holy slob and the holy bully. Two weaknesses that in the hands of God were so important for the lepers, because he fought for them. And it really brought a difference to them. But one of the things that became very much aware was how we bring God in to really defend our fears. The Hawaiian people were really afraid of leprosy, and so were the Jews. So you make what you bring is, you bring in God to really give a certain sense of legitimacy to what you're doing, excluding people throwing them out of society. See, as we read scripture, there's two things. We always have to remember there's a dual authorship of scripture. One is God and the other is people. And sometimes you will see the humanity side come through in scripture. And so with these draconian rules, we're simply a way of bringing God in to justify their actions. They did it in many ways. You see Samuel, for instance, with Saul, saying, one town is under Korban. You are to go in and you are to kill everyone, men, women, and children. That was really part of their fear of the Jewish people. They were a minority. And they were really afraid of others, outsiders. So they use God to justify their own fears and how they carried out their fears. And this can be a real temptation, a real temptation that continues. In the United States, if you ever read the history of how we worked with Jim Crow laws and segregation, Time and again, if you read so many of the churches, the white churches that taught God calls us to separate us one for another. And they allowed people to really carry out these totally unfair practices where people were excluded from the community, where so-called it was separate but equal. But let me tell you, having visited in the South, it was hardly equal. It was really a chance to make things unequal. And so as we gather today, and we see what Jesus did, and our call as Christians is to go out, is to carry this love that Jesus showed to the lepers. 
And one of the things that we've got to face is, in our society today, what about immigrants? I'm not saying there's any easy answers. There are a lot of very complex questions. But how often does certain religion aspects allow us to treat immigrants without forgetting they're human beings? I mean, that has to be the basis of all. It's a problem, yes, but there's human beings. We can't just dismiss them simply as uh, inhuman people. They can be treated in any way possible. That's a real challenge to us. And so as we hear these readings, and we see how Jesus really broke down a lot of the norms of the Jewish people, his freedom to really love, that poses a challenge to us today. You know, we, we do have challenges. And this is something where our Christianity has to come in. But we've got to remember people out on the street, the homeless, the beggars. How do we treat them? Do we recognize them? With immigrants coming in, yes, there are real problems, but they're human beings that have to be respected and loved. And that's our challenge. And so as we listen to these readings today, that's the challenge that Jesus poses for us. He asks, what can I do for you? And they said, make me clean. We're really called to make so many people clean, part of our community, human beings that we're called to love and reverence. And together as a community, we will begin the, with the Apostles' Creed. But first of all, I ask those that are serving as ushers, please go to the back of the church and meet our sacristan near the angel statue as we prepare for the collection. So I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. God of love and listening, you hear the needs of your beloved people. In hope we pray. Our ministry reached to places and people who feel forgotten and unseen, and that we bring a love that purifies and heals. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to war and for a season of peace in our time, that leaders unite to create protection for countries and people who cannot protect themselves. We pray for the citizens of Ukraine the Palestinians, and the Israelis, that all violence cease. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our... <laughs> For those who face bullying and harassment, especially young people, Get me a water. that they be imbued with a deep knowledge of their worth and be blessed by communities and friends 
who affirm their value. We pray to the Lord. For all the intentions written in the book at, our sh at the shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe, for all our beloved faithful departed, especially Barbara Polizano, Reed Wakefield, Yvonne San Giacomo, Berner Bernardine Smith, and Eric Michael Craven. And today we pray especially for our friend and co-worker in the vineyard, Sister Teresa Moser, whose absence we feel keenly as we carry on the work of God's church in this community, that she and all those named be found rejoicing in the fullness of God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. For St. Ignatius Parish, that we follow the call of Jesus into every place where the light of the gospel needs to shine. We pray to the Lord. With recognition and compassion to respond to the needs of our whole world, we ask the Lord, who lives and reigns with you, of the Holy Spirit, God forever. You know, this is the point in our liturgy when we pass the basket. These financial gifts are the lifeblood of this community. We are so grateful to everyone who can make financial contributions. So that every dollar supports the planning and outreach of this community. Those of us joining online will find a link in the chat for the Sunday collection at this time. Again, thank you for your ever generosity. Please be seated. As our gifts are gathered and prepared, please join us in singing In Every Age, which can be found on page six of your order of worship. Oh. 
And so pray, my sisters and my brothers, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May this offering, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us. And may it become for those who do what your will, the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For when we, who are your children, were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gather us again to yourself, that we, a people, formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifested as the church. And so in company with all the choirs of angels, we praise you and with great joy we proclaim. indeed holy O Lord the fountain of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. <clears throat> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. And so now let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Save us, save your love. Therefore, as we celebrate this memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and serve you. Humbly, we pray that sharing in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Salvatore, our Bishop, all the clergy, and Lord, all the holy people you've called together to be your church. And remember your servant, Sister Teresa Moser, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who is united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. And so remember also all of our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the sight of your love. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her husband, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. through him, and with him, and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And so now, taught by Jesus, we dare to sing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await in joyful hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. <clears throat> and Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles and friends, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not in our sins and failings, but rather look upon the, sin, uh, the faith, the love, the care of your entire church, and graciously grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom. We will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And so may the peace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. And, and so now as a sharing of that wonderful love of God, let us share his peace. Peace be with you. Peace, 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 peace be with you. All right. All right. Peace. Peace be with you. Peace, peace be with you. Oh. 
For ourselves and for those observing at home, let us pray, say our prayer for spiritual communion. Dear Jesus, we believe that you are fully present in the bread that is blessed and broken and the wine that is blessed and poured out in the sacrament of the Eucharist. Thank you for making us a part of you, the mystical body of Christ the Church. Renew in us your sacrificial presence and let us be united with you at this moment, so in all of our thoughts, words, and actions, we may represent you and love others as you love us. <clears throat> my sister is my brothers. This is truly Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who has taken away the sin of the world. How happy are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus keep us unto life eternal, amen. is your love can be found on page 10 of your order of worship.
closing prayer and the announcements. Thank you. Let us pray. Heavenly fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we always long for that food by which we truly lived through Christ our Lord. Thank you to all of you who brought clothes for the Salvation Army's homeless and transitional housing. Simple Needs Sundays are special ways that we can share with our community. Lay leadership nomination season is here. New members are needed for every commission. Nominations are due by Sunday, March 10th. Self-nominations are also welcome. Lay leadership distinguishes this parish and we'd like everyone to share and participate in the work of this community. Joanna Williams and Father Joe Spieler from the Kino Border Initiative are coming next weekend, seeking support for their Migrant Outreach Center in Nogales. Join us in welcoming them and learn more about their ministry. This Ash Wednesday, this Sunday, February 14th, Masses with Shearing of Ashes will be celebrated here at St. Ignatius Church. 7 a.m., 9 a.m., 12 noon, 5.30 p.m., and 7 o'clock will be sponsored by the university. This Lent, join us in the church each Friday following the 9 a.m. Mass for Stations of the Cross. The first Station of the Cross is this Friday after the 9 a.m. Mass. In celebration of Black History Month, Join fellow parishioners at 7 p.m. Tuesday evening in Stonestown to see the Oscar-nominated film, American Fiction. On Thursday, February 22nd, we'll have a discussion on Zoom. Please see the email newsletter and website to learn more in RSVP. Tom. Thank you, Father Paul. Good morning, St. Ignatius. Good morning, 49er faithful, and good morning, girls of St. Ignatius Parish. I am Tom Fergoso, the youth minister here, and I wanted to extend a special invite to a new CYO basketball season that we are kicking off, and we are extending it as a practice season for second through fifth grade girls and we will be inviting them to come and learn, play, have fun, and experience all that we have to offer. And our season will be starting on February 12th and running through May 23rd, and interested participants can sign up via our website in the events section and go Niners. <coughs> this coming week, as we celebrate Valentine's Day, which is also Ash Wednesday, we want to offer a chance for all those in loving romantic relationships to receive a blessing. I also want to know that I and the other priests will be available after Mass for those who might like an individual blessing of those in a relationship. So now I would like to invite all couples who are in loving relationships to send now and receive the blessing. So, would you hold this for me? Hold it for me. <coughs> so, abundant God, creator of all that is good, you've made us in your own image and place in the depths of our hearts a fire of love to warm us and enlighten us, to help us find our way to those blessed ones who offer us the joy we so much desire. Send forth your grace, O God, upon those our beloved friends who have committed themselves to one another in love. May the power of your spirit surround them and sustain them. May it seize their imaginations and guide their lives with hope. May this communion of love be a source of gratitude and fidelity 
May it fill them with mercy and peace. May it help them to laugh at foolishness and rejoice in all the blessings they receive. May it give them the grace to hear God's call, that they might discern their path to joy and consolation, hope and holiness. May their daily work of mutual love open their hearts and strengthen their faith. Through the grace of St. Valentine, may they be a blessing for the world till they come at last into your presence to live with you forever, the source of all love. And we ask this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And once again, I want to say thank you for my chance of being with you and praying. <coughs> Music Ministries, once again, thank you so much for all your work. And uh, I just want to say, probably most of you want to hear good luck to the 49ers. Okay. <laughs> But I also know a very good family. The wife loves football, the husband can't stand it. So do I say any widows or widows of football, I give you permission to either go golfing or shopping. <laughs> so anyway, have a very good day and good luck. Please stand. And so may Almighty God bless all of you in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Mass has ended. Let us go forth in joy and peace to love God and one another. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, Sing to Jesus, can be found on page 11 of your order of worship. And please return your orders of worship to the cubbies as you depart. <laughs>